kick off recording. So boogers in our nose. <laughs> I've done that before. I'll go back and watch it. Have I? <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> There's a blooper. <laughs> you really want to know who Superman is? <laughs> watch this. Oh! What is going on, guys? It is Brown with Superman's Comics back with another episode of that Simple Man's Comics Friend podcast. That's right. You guys watch a lot of these on video, but this is available in the audio version. So search for that Simple Man's Comics podcast wherever your podcasts are found. Another great show lined up for you tonight. You guys might be familiar with Skybound Entertainment. Comic book readers that have been around a while know Skybound, but if you're new to comics, Skybound Entertainment, one big title that everyone's aware of is Walking Dead, but they got other great titles too, such as Saga. That's another big one. Firepower, Oblivion Song, Excellence. Some of the recent titles such as Stillwater and one new title that just launched with Ultra Mega. So told you a little bit about Skybound. Let me tell you about my guest. I have the SVP of business development himself here, Sean Kirkham. That's right. Kirkham, not to be pronounced Kirkman, also known as Big Clutch. How's it going? It's fantastic, man. How are you, Ryan? I'm doing good. I've been following Skybound for a while, and it's great to have you on here. I've jumped at the privilege to have you as a guest on here, so we got some great stuff to talk about. And for some viewers that know a lot about Skybound, this might not be some new information, but there's a lot of viewers out there, I know especially on Simple Wins Comics, that might not be aware of what we're going to talk about, and we're going to get into that in just a second. But for the viewers that might not know who Sean Kirkham is, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, Sean Kirkham, I am the SVP of, uh, I don't know what, I don't know. I'm not sure what the, what the extra little tag is, you know, business development, branded culture, talent, whatever it is. It's something there. Um, the guy, what, huh? the man. <laughs> yeah, the man. That's always good. Yeah, I wish I'm the, I'm the dude <laughs> um, or the beast. I always like the beast has always been a it's always a favorite X-Men of mine, but uh, yeah. So um, SVP of Skybound, uh, been there since the beginning. I was the second employee uh, just right after our first editor in chief, uh, Cena Grace, um, and have kind of helped the company grow from, you know, just a couple of dudes in a cubicle all the way to about a hundred people now. And we are uh, Skybound touches on all sorts of different platforms, whether it's comic books and toys and games and tabletop and video games and film and TV production, you know, all over the map. So uh, it's pretty awesome. And then I've luckily been able to carve out a little niche spot for me in comics vault live, which is, you know, my, you know, kind of like a little shop at home type of, um, you know, a super mega sales channel for collectors of our stuff and others. So it's been, uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. You're like the skybound, not only SVP, but the skybound Billy Mays there. I, I definitely do. I yeah. <laughs> got some, uh, what was the one that he, he was always selling. What was his big, what was his big thing that he sold? Like, I wanted the only thing that comes to mind, which I know it wasn't him, was that stupid flex seal stuff. But he, oh my god, the flex seal guy who was like, I'm gonna saw this boat in half and then I'm gonna seal it together with flex seal and we're gonna go boating. Yes. I do that dude's uh, he's he's an icon for sure. Yes, and I do want to say, I, although I mentioned a bunch of skybound tiles at the beginning, there are so many other ones, and I know there's some diehard skybound fans out there that are gonna be like, You forgot to mention, say, Outcast, and but just check out skybound, and the, I'm most likely you see a title on there. And then if you're not familiar with Skybound, you go, oh, I know that comic and I know who Skybound is. But one thing we want to bring to people's attention is, is Comics Vault Live. You were talking about Billy Mays, Comics Vault Live. There's a lot of people aware of it because these books go super quick. But I think there's an audience out there that still might be seeing them after the fact on eBay. Can you tell us a little bit about Comics Vault Live? Yeah, I mean, so Comics Vault Live is basically like our little shop at home channel that we do. Uh, we do it once a month usually towards the, the middle or towards the middle end of the month. Um, we ended up starting this last year before the pandemic, uh, just as a lark, just because, you know, we, you know, we've got a ton of, you know, variants that we've done over the years and cool books. And I'm really big into CGC. I collect a lot of CGC books. And so we had had a lot of stuff left over uh, from, you know, conventions or whatever. And I was like, hey, like, let's just try to see if we can sell these, you know, do a little show. We can put them up on our web store, sell them and, and see how that goes. And we did it for a couple of months and it worked out really well, uh, January and February. And then of course, March hits, which is a year ago now. And then everything was like, hey, we have to shift everything. You know, no, we were, we were about to do um, Emerald City Comic Con actually. And that was going to be, that was like the first big show that got, that got postponed. 
Uh, and so we were like pivoted pretty quickly. Our, our CEO, David Alpert was um, pretty keen on figuring out like, Hey, we have to jump into the digital space. Like how do we, you know, shift gears and prepare for who knows how long to not have any conventions. And uh, luckily, you know, we were able to kind of pick this up quickly and and do it from, you know, I'm in my, this is my, <laughs> this is actually in my office at the, at home. Uh, and so we were able to kind of just start picking up and then, you know, because no one's going anywhere, we had an audience of our, our insiders and fans who decided to check it out and, you know, have done it now every month since, uh, you know, January, 2020. So we're doing pretty good. Right. And if someone wanted to tune into Comics Vault Live, how would they go about getting, um, in the know, is there a newsletter, Facebook group, um, Scott, is it Skybound Entertainment Facebook? Or how yeah. would someone say, hey, this sounds cool, sign me up? It's it's easy. You go to skybound.com. You could find, uh, we post all the information on our website. We also have a Skybound Insiders Facebook page, uh, which you can find on you know uh, the Facebook and also link to it on our um, stuff. You can follow me on socials at Big Clutch um, on um you know, Twitter and Instagram. You can also follow, follow Comics Vault Live on both of those channels as well. We post everything up there uh, for everyone to see, and we're always pretty, you know, always teasing out what, what's next. Um, our next Comics Vault Live is going to be on uh, March 26th, which is just coincides with the release of Amazon uh, Invincible, the show on Amazon Prime, which is pretty exciting. Yeah, so that's just a couple of days from this yeah, video it's right around the corner it's so crazy to think like we're about to have this massive release of invincible for the world and it's great i, I mean between the trailers and then the invincible comics and it's one thing we've talked about especially on simple man's comics channel is um we got issue one and then there's the the larry's comics variant and i've also talked about how a lot of those other issues especially within the first 10 issues, 10 issues are super underappreciated. I think they're super undervalued. But on top of that, a lot of times people say, oh, there's number one and, and there's more releases of Invincible number one. I think Skybound with Invincible and Walking Dead are two very few comic titles that I see multiple number ones get released and there's still the demand and the fandom to pick those up and to collect them. And then some very, very special ones that have come out in Comics Vault Live, right? Absolutely. Yeah. It's, we are, to say we're lucky is an understatement. The fact that our fans are, are so, um, you know, integral to what we do with uh, our comics and, and Walking Dead fans are, are some of the craziest, most passionate fans out there. And actually the same with Invincible. I mean, these guys, uh, guys and gals who have all been waiting, you know, 16 plus years for the, this thing to kind of come together, which is pretty amazing. And so, yeah, they're always looking for, you know, what's, what's the next uh, the hot thing. And, you know, Invincible is an interesting title. Cause like you said, like the first print of Invincible, there's Invincible issue number one, which came out in 2003. And then there was also the Larry's comics version. And those, both came out you know they were pretty small print run i think it was under eleven thousand for the the first print of uh the book and i think larry's was about a thousand copies so those are pretty pretty rare and hard books to find um especially in in high grade too it's pretty pretty tough um and so like when we're able to do you know we just released uh at free comic book day last year we did a um a reprint of issue number one, which had a uh, Corey Walker redid the cover in this kind of animation style. Um, I think we're releasing, uh, there's another reprint of that coming out with a different uh, cover. Uh, issue number one, but it's like an Amazon uh, version that's going to have like, uh, uh, I think Ryan Otley drew the team team on there. And so that's a really cool cover. Um, and then we've also, like you said, with CVL, we've been able to kind of like offer up a couple neat things. So we, uh, last month we offered up a, um, a red foil version of the first cover. Um, because you know, a lot of fans for comics fall live, we have this thing called foil fever, which we started doing these foil variants with, uh, Negan lives, uh, last summer. Um, and it was pretty, it was pretty cool. Like people really got into this vibe of like trying to get these, these foil uh, logo variants that we had. And so we've kind of kept that going and it's kind of become a little bit of our, our, our calling card. So um, yeah, it's pretty, it's, it's super cool. Yeah. And speaking of walking dead, uh, cause I, I'd, especially for my viewers on here, I personally need to eat a little crow because about a year ago or a little over a year, right when the comic series was kind of, coming to an end and we all we all saw it coming i mean everyone's like oh yeah walking dead's gonna end here in a few months <laughs> it was just like boom we're done but on the channel i talked about uh, i was like hey 
Walking Dead, I think, you know, those older issues still pick them up. But for the time being, I think that popularity within that Walking Dead series, you know, might be declining until we see something else happen, right? And I didn't think it was going to happen anytime soon. I mean, I knew the TV show was coming up. We, we, we knew that they had some standalone movies. But I thought for sure, hey, we're going to see some decline in these. But as a comic collector, it would be a good time to pick them up. Um, and right after that, hey, Walking Dead Deluxe, and then these foils, and then it's just like, I mean, you guys just came out and just kicked the door in and just said, like, um, not so fast. <laughs> we got some, we got some shit for you. Yeah, it's interesting too. I mean, the I, I'm you know as collector myself like i've always looking at the secondary market and seeing how things flow and it's really been interesting with the the life cycle of the walking dead because of course you know issue 100 it really started taking off there which is coincided with like the second second year of of um, or second or third season of the the show so popularity really increased and we we're selling a ton more comics and then getting through the end of the series and then you kind of like saw things kind of like you know they filled down a little bit um but then like the past, like, you know, I don't know, the past like three or four months, like things have really kind of started to pick back up on the secondary market. I think like issue number one, first prints are, are almost at like an all-time high. They're over $3,000 for a 9.8, which is pretty awesome. Um, you're seeing people still get into it. I mean, the fact that AMC, the the TV show, like you said, uh, like they announced like, hey, we're going to end the main series, but then we're going to have standalone mini series coming out. The movie's still in the works. There's video game stuff, you know, the Walking Dead Telltale game has always been great because uh, the Clementine. So there's a ton of ancillary stuff out there that kind of keeps it rolling. And I expect that, you know, that's another book like we talked about with Invisible earlier, like there was, you know, under 8,000 copies of the first print of Walking Dead produced. Like when you think about that in comparison to other, you know, key issues from the modern age, like that's a really small print run. Um, and for, you know, a marquee title, that's going to be like this. And I think I was talking to some friends on the the cgc comics board and the in the walking death thread but we mentioned like hey if you guys want to look at a, a comp like really look at like teenage mutant ninja turtles right so like that's when that first book came out like you know i think you know back in the the early 90s you were able to find it for like 20 bucks at, at any any sort of uh smaller show but now i think in the nine eight that that book's going to crack a hundred thousand dollars pretty soon like pretty massive um so you know i think the life cycle you know like the walking dead it's going to be around and it's going to always be here and uh it's pretty exciting and the fact that also like you know like you mentioned with the uh the walking dead deluxe like we're able to re-release these books to fans in a different presentation like you get to see it in color for the first time it's it's super i mean it looks these books are gorgeous. Yeah, just gorgeous. some of the covers on them are fantastic between the Tedesco's and the Finch. Finch is amazing. I think Julian Tedesco is awesome. The Art Adams variants are cool. Charlie's uncovers, like there's a lot of really cool stuff. And, and these second prints that have come out because, you know, the, fir the, if the first printings have all sold out this far. And so we've done first printing. We did a second printing for issues one through six. Oh, yeah, those headshots. These like portraits, which are like split in half, like a two-face type thing. God, those are the coolest looking covers. And there's one seen. in 25s for those are crazy hard to find right now they're super hard and that's and that's the other thing too is i think a lot of just because it's a second print a lot of shops kind of slept on it and so that that one in 25 like we i think the what went out to shops um it was less than 150 less than 200 copies of that actually out there in in uh, in sale at shops so right. they're they're, they're going to be super hard to find 100 i'm i'm not in the comic retail business, so to say, but I mean, I speak to retailers. If I remember correctly, that second per announcement, it came up kind of closer to that FOC window though also, like FOC say was Monday. I remember first seeing or hearing news about it, maybe like that Wednesday or Thursday. So Most it wasn't likely. a big window either, which is bad for, I won't say bad for retailers, but the short window, but from a collector standpoint, who's like, hey, that means not many people are gonna order them, yeah, yeah. get in there, get that rarity that's 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 a huge score for them yeah i think for that it was one of those situations where we we found ourselves like we didn't expect it to like it just the decision process to get these things done it, it takes a long time like you know we're always you know conferring with image comics and what eric stevenson wants to do and we're trying to figure out like what the best move is uh and that was the thing i was like hey if we can if we can get this back out there i mean you want to have stuff in print so people can always find it in the store, right? So if you're if you're looking up, a, I missed the first six issues; they're all sold out. I don't want to pay the secondary market, but if there's second prints available, you're like you're likely to pick up issues seven, eight, and nine if you can get one through six already, right? So that's kind of where it came from, and it just you know it seemed to work out pretty well. 
Yeah, and that's something else that, I mean, you bring up a good point because we brought that up on this channel plenty of times also where a lot of times, especially with the comic collectors, you'll hear like people don't like some of those later printings. But from a reader perspective, you just said it, you know, if someone goes in and, and even from a retailer, it's like, hey, I can't sell issue number five. I can't sell issue number six. But if they have those other copies available, like you said, where it's like, hey, I don't want to pick up number five. I'm not really a trade back paperback guy or the trade hasn't come out yet. Hey, I could pick up those later printings and, and just from a reader point of view, get that whole story, that digestive chapter. A hundred percent. That is exactly the, the reasoning behind it. Yeah. And we, we've talked about Walking Dead a lot. We did talk about Invincible. I talked about how that issue number one is kind of up there in price, but looking at Walking Dead, I'm not saying Invincible carries that same fandom as Walking Dead, but I still think even with the prices for issue number one right now, I think they're still kind of plenty of room to grow. I I agree with you too. I think that there is a lot of space uh, for it to grow. Um, I think that you know, when you realize like, you know, how impactful it could be and the fact that like, yeah, we have the, we have the, the animated series coming out on Amazon, uh, but you know, there's still the, the feature film is still in the works and we're still working on that. So like that down the line, it, you know, if, if in a couple of years, like that thing could come out, like, you're just you're, you're taking more people along for the ride and it's going to be exciting you start seeing more invincible and costumes on halloween oh, I'd love, i every, would love that yeah every time you open it up to a different you know a different potential audience a lot of people go back and they go oh that was a comic book so that's i mean that's that's one of the we actually were having the same conversation with someone else the other day and the fact that like you know there are people um you know who don't who don't associate superheroes with marvel or dc or image or whatever it's just superhero things they don't really know like we do we like yeah. know the inner workings of stuff and are cool like that guy's a marvel exclusive yeah, artist like, he's a DC you read guy. marvel i don't like batman yeah and it's like people don't like you know if you if you went to my nephew he's like he's not going to know that batman and you know spider-man are in different you know they're owned by different companies and whatever like it, to him it doesn't matter they're all superheroes it's all great so um yeah, and I think Invincible will kind of like fall in that space where people will learn about it. They're like, oh, this is really cool. Oh, how how different is this from the other stuff? You know, like I think we saw with boys, you know, the boys are like, this is way different than anything you're going to find in the MCU or whatever. Um, you know, but I think people get excited for something that's completely different. And I think Invincible has has all the things that that superhero fans want, um, but is definitely, you know, it's it's a more, uh, you know, more adult um you know, experience take on it. And it's, and it's honestly, it has been even before I started working at Skybound, Invincible was my favorite superhero book, period. I wonder, I wonder how many uh, parents sat down with their kids to watch a good old fashioned superhero show like The Boys. And <laughs> I was like, what the heck? Like, oh, shit. He just lasered her boobs. <laughs> yeah. The dads were probably like, if it was just a dad and a son, a lot of them might have been like, nah. <laughs> He's like, all right, we're good. Yeah, if the moms are around, like, you shouldn't be watching this. Oh yeah, you, and it's also funny too because I think we 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 noticed, especially a lot with the early days of The Walking Dead, of how you know Walking Dead. It, this isn't this is a mature book. This is meant for adults, eighteen plus. But we were we'd go to shows like I remember San Diego Comic Con. I had a, a father and his daughter. She was I think she was like nine at the time. He was like, yeah, she reads it. He's like, I go through the books and I I'll put a note on a page like a sticky note if it's a page I don't want her to read, but she reads everything else. And I'm like, this is, re this is crazy. But, you know, I think kids are a little bit more mature now. They, 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 they're accustomed to it. They see it in, in video games and they see it in TV and stuff. Yeah. And it just is, you know, it's, it's more custom. So. The walking dead shows how I got my wife to start reading comics because um, she didn't really watch till like season three. And I remember it was like a hurricane weekend or something. And we were like bunkered down and basically watching that marathoning it on Netflix until the, the power went out. And she kept talking about how great the show was. And of course I kept ruining it going, Oh man, the book's so much better. And then next thing I know, I, um, ordering the compendiums on, on Amazon for, and <laughs> kind of, kind of switched down as she got to where she's like, I don't want to read the show. I don't want to watch the show. I just want to read the book. That's amazing. I, I I have a very similar situation. Like my girlfriend, I, I gave her the Walking Dead Compendium. It's like, hey, read, you know, read this. This is what I'm working on. This is cool. She read it in a weekend. It was the first comic she'd ever read. And now she actually reads more comics than I do now. She just like every night she's got she's got a new book that she's reading. It's 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 pretty awesome. I love the fact that like we've been able to use that as a gateway drug into into our world with uh, yeah. with our, our spouses. 
Yeah, and I felt like I felt like a library clerk. She would bring it, and I give her the next one. And then once she finished with that, she's like, "What else?" And then I switched her to the the saga hardcovers. <laughs> saga ones are great too. And I, that's another that's another book that I think it's a, an easy easy gateway book for you know non comic readers. You know, like this is a great this is an amazing story. Uh, it's it's got cool sci fi elements, awesome family elements. Like it's it's beautifully drawn. It's it's amazingly written. It's like it's one of the best uh, books out there. Now I want to talk about you're talking about comic getting back to comics vault live yeah. real quick, right? You're talking about how hey you like to do CGC collectibles. Um, is there an average price on comics vault live that hey these are what the books go for? I think for the most part, I, I try to you know if we're if we're digging in the vault, and we're finding stuff that's a little bit older and and not you know these not newer stuff. Like I try to find stuff that it, that is you know comp with eBay. I try to find stuff that words and below eBay. I like to be able to say, Hey, treating, treating our fans and our, our viewers with something that like they can get here and they're going to get a deal. Um, and then for newer stuff, I think it just depends on what the release is. You know, certain things are a little higher with the smaller print run. Um, but for the most part, I always try to find something I want to, it's weird to say like this, but I want there to be meat on the bone for someone. If they're going to buy it from us and they're like, Hey, I want to, if I need to sell it now, or I want to sell it later, like that there's going to be some room for them to be able to like, Hey, I can turn this into make a little extra scratch off it. If that's need be. Um, yeah. I don't want to price anyone out, you know, like that's, that's the other situation, but I, you know, there is also a little bit of a fee because we are, you know, we're getting books made. Uh, we're only selling at this point in time, only selling CGC 9.8s. Uh, and so we're making sure that, you know, these are, these are graded books. They're already, they're already screened. They've gone through the, the rigors of whatever. And so, you know, we have to work in, work out how all the costs work, but for the most part, like we've, the last couple of releases, I think we had Radiant Black number one, we did a Tyler Kirkham variant and that was 7499. I think Invincible Foils have been 7499. So that's, that's a pretty comfortable, um, uh, I think price for, for a lot of the newer stuff. And of course, it shows when, you know, I think we sold out Radiant Black and Invincible, the red foil editions in like under three minutes each. So that shows like there's people are comfortable with that price. Right. Radiant Black, if you guys haven't started reading that yet, Kyle Higgins, awesome, awesome comic. I highly suggest you do so. But I also wanted to bring up a point is right before we got on here to talk, I went and looked at some of those titles that you just mentioned and said, hey, what are they kind of going for on eBay right now? That Radiant Black number one you were just talking about, Right now, nine eights are selling on eBay for about one eighty five two hundred. That's fantastic. That invincible, that invincible number one, that red foil nine eight, that's selling for around two hundred. And then you got that Walking Dead Deluxe number seven, the Virgin Black and White Finch variant. Those are going for about one fifty five. And then before that, on previous ones, you had Walking Dead number one, another Deluxe Black and White Virgin, <laughs> Black and White Virgin Finch variant. That's selling for about one forty right now. And then the Walking Dead number one deluxe foil variant is selling for 180. People love the foil, man. They've got yeah. foil fever. But it, it just goes to show you, especially with like you're talking about Radiant Black Invincible, the, some of those more recent releases, they're already duplicated in, in resale value. Yeah, they're, they're doubling up for sure. And I think it's I think it's really good too because you know, I think fans who they want that thing that's like they're gonna get they're gonna buy the version that they're gonna read, but then they also want something like, hey, this is a really cool cover, this is a really cool um cover treatment or whatever and so they want to have like this is, i always you know i would buy stuff like i buy the reader copy and i buy the the copy i put away and so maybe they're buying one of the regular variants the the a or b covers and that's the one they're going to read but they're going to buy this one as their their collector piece that they're going to put away knowing that it's a smaller print run or whatever so i don't think we're necessarily cannibalizing uh readership you know and that's a that's a big thing for me i want to make sure i want people to read comics like that's right. how we grow this um but i, I don't think it's a, i don't think it's a, a deterrent at all yeah, they always get me coming and going because I, if it's a series that I really, really, really like, I usually pick up the floppy to read, pick up some variants to collect, and then I end up picking up the trade, and then I end up picking up the compendium or the hardcover. Oh, absolutely. I like to where I can read it, but then when I get down to that finish line, it's like big old chunks where I'm like, I'm just going to get the biggest volume and read it all in, in a sitting also with too a nice cigar and some whiskey. <laughs> Absolutely. And then when you also add in all the cool back matter that some hardcovers put in there and stuff and like all the behind the scenes and interviews and all this stuff, like that's, that, that's an extra, like the DVD extras that I always like love to watch. So it's, it's, it's nice to be able to have that as well. So another thing that you guys also do, you have comic vault live, right? And then uh, you also have skybound expo, correct? Yeah, Expo. And so Expo was really like, like I mentioned earlier, was that that 
the digital initiative while we're in the pandemic. It's like San Diego Comic Con is is our biggest show of the year. It, it's it's the tent pole in the industry. It's a thing that I, I mean, it's I've been going for twenty something years now. I don't want to say too many because I don't want to seem that old. Although I've got enough gray to prove it. Um, yeah, I've been going there for I think twenty three years at this point, and I not having that left a big void in what we're doing. And, and we, you know, we had stuff planned. It was Skybound's 10th anniversary. And so we decided to let, let's try this expo idea. And so the X for the X for 10, which I thought was a, that was a pretty clever thing on my part, but um, you know, we like, let's do the expo. And then we, so we basically took what we would have done at San Diego and the um, you know, the, the, the five days and we crammed it into two days of live streams and, and sales and stuff. And then, you know, did, did a pretty amazing job. And it's really, I think it filled the void for a lot of our fans who weren't able to see us at the show. And then also fans who weren't able to go to San Diego normally, you know, you're going to get people who like, I'm not going to go to the show because I, I can't get the tickets or it's too far and too expensive. And so they're able to come and see all our panels and all the talks with Robert and, and, and the stuff that we're selling all our exclusives and mystery boxes. And it was a, uh, it was a pretty great time. And so I think now we've kind of built that into the culture of skybound is like that's now going to be a thing that we do every quarter and so we've we've since july last year we've done every quarter we've done one we did a halloween one we did a um we just did the creator fest one in february we got another one coming up in may i believe and then we'll have another one uh this coming summer yeah and it was weird because you know at convention season for the past year has been totally different and then once you heard that san diego comic-con this past year was going virtual everyone was like waiting what to expect because there's people that you mentioned hey i can never get to san diego comic-con this gives me the chance to tune in and watch all these panels and see you know hall h and everything and we were covering it on this on simple wins comics youtube channel and we were kind of i want to say underwhelmed by a lot of it because you were expecting these, I don't want to say grandiose panels, but there wasn't, <laughs> I hate to be a dick, but man, some of it was like D for effort on some of the panels. But when we watched the Skybound Expo and then another one that we brought up with Funko, uh, Skybound, your expo, your panels, it looked like there was effort put into it it was entertaining it was joys to watch and it's not to knock the other people because i understand that it's different technology is different but it just had a gravitas to it that it was more interesting and it retained people's attention watching the expo and not just from san diego but the expo since since then as well yeah i think it's really it it I really appreciate your kind words about how we put together the expo. I think we have a pretty fantastic production team in house. Uh, and, um, you know, Brian and Ian who are and Courtney, who are our production hub, those guys did a fantastic job. And then Brian Huntington, who's our, our online content VP, he was really kind of like the guy who spearheaded the whole thing. And then our design team, like we're, we're kind of built to do a lot more, um, you know, film, you know, audio visual type stuff. Like we're, we're meant to, we're, We'd have a media in house. We do the stuff we've we've been live streaming and doing uh, live events for a while. We we have the movie trivia showdown, so like we have a lot of that experience. So we were able to kind of quickly pivot and kind of figure out like how do we want this to look and how do we want to shape it. Um, and that's kind of what we've held, you know, since then. Like we're our whole goal is to just make things look better. I mean, like we were talking earlier, like this, the background that I have here on screen. Like when I was doing this myself, it was just like here, it was just a shitty IKEA shelf, and like it just I had stacks of papers and nothing was like whatever. And, <laughs> I told him, yeah, like mine behind me. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it, but it's it's because it was like this is where I live. It was like this is the this was my just I was just my office. You know, I just didn't have anything else, but you know, since we realized like, Hey, we're going to shift more of this and, you know, with pandemic, like we're not going to be going into the office until sometime later this summer, if not fall. And so I was like, all right, cool. Like, let me at least have some fun. So like the background can be kind of cool. Like, you know, put up these shelves, which are still Ikea, but then I put lights and like, you know, action figures and toys and stuff. And just like stuff that I like to see. And there's some like little Easter eggy stuff that, that, you know, fans who know me they go oh cool it's a that's a gi joe figure or whatever like that's a grifter mask and they can see something they know that i like already and right. i just you know i can kind of keep it going like your stuff like i love like i i'm we are sitting here like i'm picking apart every little like thing you've got in the background like, there's funko pops there's he-man stuff there's a castle gray skull there's some power there's rangers like, gi joe there's a gi joe uh, classified <laughs> figures over there like and that, that's stuff i love like it's yeah. just it's it's like i love to hunt and see like what other people are into because i keep I'm into those outcast cards <laughs> behind huh? you i keep oh, yeah, on those outcast outcast cards. Cards back there i love them so much like that was such a fun product also 
talking about conventions oh. there was a survey that went out not too long ago especially to skybound insiders oh, yes. I, I, I got it on the insiders i don't know if it went out much past that but there's talk about a skybound convention cruise there there may have been there may have been a survey sent out uh just trying to, to test the you know pardon the pun but test the waters <laughs> um we had done um you know we had partnered with the company uh to do some uh, Walker Stalker themed cruises, which was a Walking Dead themed cruise. We did that for a number of years and that was really, really cool. Um, and so we we were like, hey, what is, you know, just looking at options and knowing how fun that was. And I know we have a lot of really diehard fans who were like, hey man, I'd love to go do another one of those. And, you know, what, what can we pivot to? And so, you know, talking with, you know, the guys over at Image and us and we're like, hey, is there something we can put together in this world? And so we're like, well, let's just see what our fans think, right? Because I, you know, everyone's still, still at home. It's, it's still in the, it's still in the early days of the. I mean, I guess it almost been nine months in the pandemic when we sent that thing out. But you know, knowing that people are like, hey, like the, the, the there's light at the end of the tunnel. Hopefully, in a couple months, in in a, in a year, that we'll be able to do it. And let's see, like, what just gauge people's interest. And I think really it it showed that people are open to the idea. We had a ton of positive um you know results and i think we're gonna we're gonna send out another we're gonna do another survey here shortly just to kind of gauge again you know we're gonna take the notes and stuff we got previously see if we can alter it and fix it up a little bit and see if how people feel about it again and i'll I'll admit i think you know with with the rate that the um vaccinations in the country seem to be going like it seems like it's it's moving pretty quickly and smoothly um you know there's definitely talk that you know with other conventions that you know i think emerald city comic-con is talking about happening in uh, december uh, san diego comic-con is talking about having a smaller event in november like there's definitely like there's definitely you know glimpses of hope towards the end of this year that there's going to be you know in-person conventions and you know the cruises are, are pretty awesome and they're fun and uh washy washy they're always super clean. Uh, I've never had a single issue on any cruise ship I've been on and I've been on a number of them and they're, they're pretty awesome. So, you know, if we could put it together, I think it'd be pretty awesome. It'd be really fun. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's sad because we'd also normally be coming up on WonderCon right about now. Oh my gosh. WonderCon is one of my favorite shows. I, I used to go to it back in, you know, high school, a billion years ago when it was in San Francisco and Oakland and whatnot. So uh, I, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I've never been in this. How bad my luck is last year bought my plane ticket to go no <laughs> way like three weeks after it's like cancel can't everything was canceled for the year and i was like Man. oh my god and well when you come out I'm, here when we do it next time we'll make sure we connect up and uh you know we'll, we'll take you to the sky office or when i walk you around yeah between that between WonderCon and i'm a, I'm a huge disney fan so i was like i'm a, i wouldn't make a disneyland trip by itself because i'm a disney world type of person most Ooh, likely yeah you're one of those East East but if I was going out there for something else and, and, and then visit Disneyland, California Adventure and stuff like that, I'd definitely make it the trip. Oh, yeah. And it's the best, too, because it's like literally across the street. Yeah. Like the Anaheim Convention Center, you just it's it's a long street you have to cross, yeah. but it's right there. So, yeah, it's pretty And awesome. it's an excuse to like, come, you know, get the wife to go. I'm like, I'm going to go to the convention for a little bit. And I'll, <laughs> I'll catch you guys in line at uh, Space Mountain. It'll be good. Yes. Now, you mentioned we got another Comics Vault Live coming up within a few days, right? Yep. And you, there's been some announcements over the past week, but can you tell the viewers what kind of titles or maybe what kind of books to expect in this Comic Vaults Live? Yeah, so we're super pumped. I, you know, we Radiant Black was our first kind of non Skybound book that we partnered with um, Image Comics on, and so uh, I think that that set the stage for us going forward. And we've been lucky enough to partner with Image on releasing Noctera, and so we're doing a Noctera number one variant. Uh, it's the Jock sketch cover, so it's Jock's cover of the main character, and it's got a it's a it's it's awesome. It's like a white cover, um, and it's got a awesome like red foil logo. It just it looks like a million bucks. Uh, so that's that's going to be available. Uh, we're also Ultra Mega, which came out uh, this week. Uh, Ultra Mega number one from James Heron. Yeah, which if you haven't picked up, I highly recommend you guys pick that up. It's, it's so it's good. Great on um, its own right. But if you're a fan of like Kaiju type stories, definitely want to pick this up. Yeah, it's, it's going to be fantastic. And the, and the thing I'm soaked about this one is that we actually last year, we uh, we started working with a creator named Attack Peter, who does uh, these wood block, uh, these block prints. And he's really big into Kaiju and he's done a ton of stuff for Mondo and doing um, uh, Godzilla stuff and Sideshow. And he's, he's an amazing talent and he's, he's 
a guy that I've been like waiting, like, let's find the right opportunity for you to do a comic cover. And we're going to do one for uh, Ultra Mega number one. So we've got the Attack Peter variant, which is going to be exclusive to the show, which is super exciting. We're also going to have, we're also going to release a print of that cover, which is like a 20 by 30 size print. So it's going to be uh, pretty awesome. So that'll be available at the same time too. And then knowing that we were talking about Invincible earlier. So Robert and his love for, he's, I mean, Robert definitely has foil fever at this point. Uh, so we're doing a very special because it is the release day of Invincible on uh, this Friday, the 26th. So we're going to have Invincible number one, the blue foil and yellow foil the the colors of his suit so we're gonna do a two pack of those so you'll be able to get both both foil books in the same uh the same purchase so um, that's awesome yeah i was just picturing like meetings of discussing it and like robert kirkman being like the salt bay guy <laughs> with the, every time we come up, he's like some foil, let's put some foil in it <laughs> drop it on there yeah absolutely he's like you want red foil gotcha you want some blue foil i got you <laughs> so those are all great books and i'm sure you guys we're gonna have the link to the Facebook group. We're going to link to Sean's social on here. Make sure you're following all those because you definitely want to tune into that Comics Vault Live because they're going to sell quick. He just mentioned the last time they had some of those sell out within three minutes. So you don't want to be on that, right? Yeah, absolutely. And and we, you know, the we, it's super cool, man. I love I love people supporting us and us, us being able to give them something good. So uh, yeah, it's going to be great. Come, come join us on Friday. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you guys join that Skybound Insiders Facebook group. You can also sign up for the newsletter on Skybound site, as well as the collaborations he was talking about just a minute ago. If you go to Skybound site, there's a whole section there for everyone that they're collaborating with. So if you want some of those other products, not just the Comic Vault Live stuff, make sure you check that out as well. So one other thing I want to talk about is Skybound just started their deluxe signature edition on Kickstarter with the first series they've chose to be excellence, right? That's correct. Yeah. I mean, uh, this book, I know you guys, you had Kari and, and Brandon on uh, recently. Uh, this is a super awesome experience for us to be able to get this, uh, to do the deluxe hardcover version. Uh, it, it's going to look like, it looks fantastic. All the stuff they're adding in there, all these extra character profiles, rookie cards for, tr for those of us who love trading cards. Yes, doing a set that's of the one cards. I backed. I even told them during the, during the interview. Um, yeah, it's, it's awesome package. And so uh, we're really excited to be able to kind of offer this up to fans and, and uh, make it available. Yeah. There's so much great. They've already, they've been backed. They were already starting to hit and stretch golds. They're just about to hit that other stretch gold, stretch gold. They're just about to hit the other stretch goal where they're adding more trading cards. But if you haven't backed it yet and you're excited to do so, make sure you do so very soon because it actually ends this week. Yep. One other thing before I let you go, Sean. Oh, no. How did you get the name Big Clutch? Oh, I wish it, I wish it was a... Uh... I wish it was like this long drawn out, amazing story that it had to do with you know me coming through in a clutch moment and whatever. But uh, I'm actually really, I'm a huge fan of the band clutch. And uh, I had a period of time where I just wore their t-shirts all the time. And uh, you know, one of my good buddies, Tyler Childs, we were at a, we were at a brunch uh, chugging mimosas and I'm wearing this bright green shirt with a big clutch logo. And he's like, what's up big clutch. <laughs> and then it just stuck. And, you know, we, you know, we have a group of guys, we, we would play football every month and, and do stuff. And it just like, as it just started rolling through, he just, you know, he just kept, kept adding on, adding on. And it became, it became like the, the nickname. So it's, it's, um, you know, it's been good. I've had it for about, uh, you know, 15 years now. So it feels pretty, uh, you know, pretty solid. It's great because, you know, I had no idea. I was thinking like, like you said, either, uh, not that, not that you aren't, cause I'm sure you are, are the guy that comes through at, you know, the buzzer beater all the time. But the fact that you mentioned it, the fact that you mentioned the, the, ba the band name, as soon as you mentioned the band name and the t-shirt, I like instantly went back to like that period of time where <laughs> I was the same way, listening to Clutch and, and, and Rage Against the Machine and all the nonsense. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, love, big music guy over here too. And, you know, I, we were talking about, you know, stuff earlier and going to shows and whatnot. And so it's, it's you know, I it's, part of my life and the the fact that it's you know there it's my favorite band it actually can kind of be a little bit of a, a moniker now really means a lot to me so it's good so sean once again thank you so much for coming on here it's been a huge honor it's been a privilege i'm glad my viewers on Superman's comics got to see you got to find out more information about comics vault live because i think a lot of them are missing out on some of these books and they're seeing them after the fact on instagram or ebay well here's the place to go to right now to get them when they go on sale but make sure you're quick with that mouse click because they're selling out. 
but I also want to give you the time right now to let my viewers know what else do you got going on? Where can they find you on social? What do they need to know? What's coming up with Skybound? Again, man, thanks, Brian, for having me out here. I really appreciate it. It's been great talking to you. Uh, if anyone wants to find out more about Comics Fall Live and Skybound in general, go to skybound.com. You can find me at Big Clutch on uh, Instagram and Twitter and also Comics Vault Live. That's a comics with a S, Vault Live, at uh, on Twitter and Instagram as well. So there it is. And once again, I'll put links to all those social in the description of this video, as well as up on the screen. But this has been Brian Silverman's Comics. I'll see you guys in the next video.